Hey everyone, welcome back to part eight of the series on how to deploy Azure Data Platform end-to-end -end with Azure DevOps Pipeline. In today's video, we're going to focus on deploying Azure SQL database tables and stop sieges using SSDT, which is SQL Server Data Tools. Just to illustrate, this is the whole um, design that we've followed so far from part one to seven. We have deployed all of this in part five video. So check out that video if you haven't deployed the infrastructure with Terraform. And we're just going to focus on deploying tables or scripts incrementally on the SQL database. Yeah. And to follow along, please make sure you actually have done part one to five, part five videos. And we will be using Visual Studio 2019, not Visual Studio Code, uh, because we will need to use SSDT, SQL Server Data Tools, that comes with Visual Studio 2019. We will whitelist your public IP, or my public IP in this case, on the SQL Server firewall, just so that we can uh, make changes and grant the uh, DevOps Service Connection access to deploy changes. Next, we will need access to the SQL database. In this case, I will assign myself as the admin in this demo. And lastly, we will grant the DevOps service principal access to the SQL database so that it can make the change that we want. All right, that's it about this, the prerequisites. Let's just go and do the demo. To start the demo, I'd like to show you what we've got first. Now in my Azure DevOps, if you go down to platform and under this, we go, I have a folder called database. Now this is where the SQL database tables or stop procedures or views that you may have uh, will reside. Now under this database folder, you can see here, there's a bunch of folders, there's a bunch of files in here. And I want to point out this SLN which is a solution file uh, that is created from Visual Studio 2019. And to do that, this is what the Visual Studio 19 looks like. So if I'm in Visual Studio 2019, Visual Studio Enterprise or whatever you call that, this is my Visual sorry, this solution file. It's called database, uh, which comes from that DevOps repo earlier and in here i have a location sql file and sp load location sql file and this one is just creating a an empty table there you go just a create table very simple and this one is just uh, again very simple stop procedure I think I just want to show you that this one works when we deploy it, just for demo purposes. If you're new to SSDT or SQL Server Data Tool and using Visual Studio 2019, I'm just going to demo this quickly on how you can create a new solution and, and, and what is it that you could do to make sure that this can be used for deployment. However, Again, all these files are available on my GitHub, so you don't actually have to replicate this process if you don't want to. But if you want to create a new SSDT, you go to File, let's say Create New Project. What you need to find is, I already have one here called SQL Server Database Project. This is what you're after. Or if you have, you're doing it for the first time, you want to type here SQL Database, and it should give you this one here in the middle, SQL Server Database Project. You click that, you click Next. And this is where you create a new project and a new solution. And I happen to locate this in my repos locally and create a new solution. And I want to place that in the same directory. Um, you can put that as a set in a separate directory. Basically, what that means is if I just go back quickly to my repo, if you tick that off, you have the solution file and the uh, the project uh, in in 
kind of different folders but I just for simplicity I put them together when I say in the same directory it just means the same folder whereas the database project can be in a separate folder and you just click create and when you create that uh, provided that you um, you do it correctly you will end up with this solution database and all I need to do is I just need to create right click and then add a folder and I'm not going to create a new schema so I'll just use the DBO schema that comes with this database for simplicity uh, but you can obviously create a new schema but if you do create a new schema make sure you add the script here to create that new schema just like you, what you do in SQL database okay now we've got this and I'm going to use this for the demo purposes um, if you do have any more questions about SSDT more than happy to answer that in the comment below let me know next I'd like to show you what the pipeline code looks like so this is my YAML pipeline code and part 8 equal DB you can find this code in github obviously the first couple of lines here it is just the same settings as before it's a manual trigger and we're using Microsoft hosted DevOps agent and for the stages we just have one stage that is test because we're deploying Google database codes from development environment and ie the solution file that we prepped earlier in DevOps repo into test environment SQL database we have two variable groups here common and tests and the steps here there are three steps really the first one is we are building the Fusion Studio solution file and what happened in this step is it will produce a deck pack file which is a uh, compressed and packaged version of the SQL DB project itself and the next one here is to actually get a token now this is required for the next step to authenticate to SQL DB and the last step is to publish the deck pack file produced in the first step into the uh, SQL database itself and just to break it down this is the uh, service connection we're using connection string and the reason why we're using this this is notably the most secure and and best from maintenance perspective because we don't use sql server credentials in here or service principle we essentially use token to authenticate to the sql server and the connection string is parameterized based on the environment as you can see here sql server name and sql database name based on the name in the test environment uh, deployment task is tech pack task publish tech pack file from the one that's published in the first step that's the one uh, make sure you adjust the name if you have your own different name solu different solution name and the last one here is interesting one this is additional argument so if you want to find out a bit more I would suggest uh, you check out online for Microsoft documentation in terms of death pack tasks additional arguments you should be able to find some there and first thing here we definitely need this access token because we will need this to authenticate and the last two arguments here is essentially just uh, uh, optional so the first one is block on possible data loss so if the deployment may result in data loss uh, you have an option to set it to true meaning the deployment will fail if that's the case if, if it's going to incur data loss I'm just going to set it to false just for demo purposes and another one here is to drop statistics not in source so when we deploy this tech pack file if the deployment recognize some statistics file uh, statistics objects in the SQL DB that's not uh, existing in the in the solution file that, that we we set up then it will drop them will drop them in the test uh, database this is optional again so you don't have to do it okay now we are in Azure portal where I'm going to start granting access to the service principal, the network IP address, as well as the admin. 
as per the prerequisites. So I'm going to head to my SQL Server here in my test resource group. And first, I'm going to assign myself as the admin. Set admin. And I'm just going to assign, look for my name. And then save. Once that's save, we want to go to firewalls and virtual networks. And just to give me access, I'm just going to assign myself the public IP here and should show up in here. And I'll just click save. This would let me access the SQL DB directly. And then I'm just going to head to my SQL DB. And within it, I'm going to go to query editor and continue as myself since I'm now an admin. Great. So now I'm inside the SQL DB. Uh, I want to grant my service principal DevOps access in it. This is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to create user within the SQL DB for that service principal SP DevOps pipeline. I'm going to give DB owner to it and I'll click run. All right, query succeeded in here. Okay. Back to Azure DevOps, where now I'm going to create a new pipeline. As usual, I'm going to pick Azure DevOps Git, source this project and pick the existing YAML pipeline. I'll pick part eight, SQL DB YAML, continue, and I'll just save it for now. From here, I'm going to click edit, and I will go to triggers. I'll go to YAML here, where I'm going to rename this. And I'll go to variables and I'll go variable groups and I'm going to link common and TST variable groups and then I'll click save. And once that's done, I'll go back to pipelines, I'll click all and now I have part eight where I'm going to run it. First run, it's going to need permission, so I'll click view and permit. And now it should run within the next couple of seconds. After about two minutes, now the deployment is complete. So if we just drill down a bit, as you can see, this is the three main steps that we follow. This is where it builds the solution file from this is studio 2019 gets the token and then it will publish that tech pack that was built earlier into the SQL DB. I think we go straight to the uh, SQL database itself and if we just try to check what's available if I just click refresh here now I can see there's a new table and a new stock procedure that came from the Visual Studio solution file. And this just proves that the deployment is successful. There's no data in it, so just this for demo purposes. That is the end of part eight video on deployment of SQL database with Azure DevOps pipeline. Press like and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy it so far. Otherwise, we're going to start with part nine in the next video, where we're going to show you how to create and set up self-hosted agent in Azure DevOps. See you there.